first episode of expat life and for you who may not know what an expat life person is it's actually somebody who lives in another country than the original country me i'm an expat i'm originally swedish living in texas so that's where i am right now and um well i'm gonna jump back to europe or almost europe and say hi to darren busby you sound very British to me, but I do understand that you're not. <laughs> that's not where you are. You're somewhere not too far away in on an island. Tell me, welcome to the show, Darren. Uh, thanks for having me. First of all, it's a privilege to be here. Um, it really is. Um, you're correct. It's not a British accent. It's an Essex accent. I'm not sure uh if many people understand that um but i i originate from just outside of london i i've lived just outside of london my entire life which is just over 30 years clearly i'm young um and and yes i'm coming from you from a sunny island called future insurer which um is one of the few islands just off the coast of africa and um yeah we moved out there six months ago and traveled four hours, 2,000 miles, and started a new life. And it's fantastic. It's absolutely brilliant. That, that is that is so cool. You just got an idea, we're going to move, and then you move, basically? Uh, well, there's a process to it. I mean, we, we, we bought a house out here before we moved, obviously. Um, but we holidayed here for many years. We knew all the islands. It's only a time. The island is 60, 70 kilometers, tiny little island. Um, but we just love it here. We just saw life. Um, we, we bought a holiday home, and, and I don't think your guests will be too familiar with the politics of England. But England came out of the England came out of the Eurozone a while back at Brexit. It, mm -hmm. it made life a bit awkward for us to get here. Uh, and my wife would try months and then come back to the UK for a month. Um, many things changed in Brexit for a lot of people. Not Brexit, sorry, in COVID for a lot of people, the same with us. You look at life really different. And I was working, genuinely working six, seven days a week. Um, I was a sales director for a very big company and was on call 24 seven. And you start to lose yeah. this proverbial will to live. You know, you're on the hamster wheel for a long time. You think you're earning good money, um, but more than half of that in tax. And then you start seeing the cost of living in the UK and you kind of just get disillusioned. And there's more to life. There's so, so much more to life than just, just the money in the hamster wheel to make other people rich. So, yeah, we put a visa application in and went through a really big process and came out the other end. Uh, probably, I'll probably add here... How long, time did that visa, how long time did that visa application take? <laughs> it felt like forever. It was so I stressful. Know, uh, <laughs> I get my mom into US and we had the privilege of me being a citizen already. It was a mess. We sold our bricks and mortar home, moved out in March. So almost a year ago, we moved out of bricks and mortar. Uh, ran into some rented accommodation and it was just going through and it was going through it was going through it then gathered pace about august time uh we went to the embassy and was told it would take 15 days uh and that took six weeks <laughs> and then it was almost back to square one again um yeah, it was crazy so um it, it, the whole process is out of your hands. And thankfully, from day one, I, I, took, I went to a legal company. I didn't try and do it myself. 
because it would have just been too much. Um, so it was hard because you, you couldn't really, again, I don't know how the rental situation is for other people, but you couldn't tie yourself into long-term rental contracts. So you were almost like paying holiday rates in a caravan to stay for a few weeks while things were getting resolved. Move from one caravan to another. So it, it was like an existence, really. But all you've got to do is just genuinely, it's a, it's a few short months in your life. Seriously, push it to one side and worry about the end game. You've got to stay focused on, on what you're looking to achieve and, and, and really go into it knowing what you want out of life and why. It's not a decision to just jump into over a couple of beers and say, yeah, we're doing this. Um, Michelle and I have been discussing it for, for many years. It's been an aspiration for a long time. We, before we bought this house, we'd been looking at two years with a local agent on the island. Um, so it, it wasn't, and we, we, we're literally, I'm literally 10 minutes from the airport. You know, it, it, as crazy wow. as it sounds, I, I can get off a plane, uh, literally walk off a plane, go through customs. I'll be indoors in, in 20 minutes. You're just coming through customs. And um, that's deliberate. That was deliberate at the time. So we didn't have to get taxis for 40, 45 minutes. It's even better now because we've got a car and we can get about a lot easier. Um, and we're not, I'm, I'm two minutes from the beach, um, but we're on the outside of the town. We, we're not gone in the town. That's deliberate because it sounds cruel. We want to get away from the tourists. So, so yeah, the Canarian Islands are tourist islands. I'll tell you that. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. They're, they're just flooded. So, I mean, we, we, we love them. We absolutely love them, but, um, you know, cold sack there's literally eight homes in where in this row where i am there's eight in front eight behind we've got a 40 meter pool and you know i've got a gym in the house i've got everything i need i i'm at the top of a if you like a hill stroke a mountain i've got sound of music panoramic views around me one side and, and golf courses and oceans the other you couldn't wish for anything more it's so peaceful it's so quiet it's just it's so idyllic and um yeah, so if anyone wants to come out of holiday, give me a shout. You know, I'll pick you up from the airport. It's, it's, um, I'm coming. It's, it, it, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't begin to tell people from a positive perspective what a difference it's made to not my life, my wife's life, my family's life, everything. It's just, it, it, it's amazing. But it, it, it's not for the faint-hearted. That, that transition, once you make that decision to get the visa in your hand or to get to the end result, even when we got here, Unlike a holiday maker, there's still a lot of red tape. You've got to give um, police statements. You've got to give fingerprints. You've got to get yourself registered with local authorities. Uh, getting a car registered is, God, that's the worst thing I've ever come across. That it took me four attempts to a local council office to get a car registered in my name. Yeah, you don't want to know. It's just crazy. Um, Why? But, um, it's just red tape. It's different countries. It's different cultures. And they don't actually all tell, they send you to a different office, but they don't actually tell you the process. So when you get to the office, they send you somewhere else and they still don't tell you the process. And then you get to the force off and they won't talk to you because you haven't got a Spanish translator with you. And it's just bizarre. So, <laughs> so, so <laughs> but you just, you kind of just have to chill out and relax. You know, it, it's really little things like that. As you're going through it and you see it, you do begin to relax. The first couple of times you think, oh, this is bonkers, and you kind of feel like you're getting stressed. But you, you, you realise the whole thing now and just, okay, it is what it is, and just embrace it. Um, but it's just, it, it's, it is what it is. It's a different way of life. It's not, it's not living the traditional British way. It's outside. It's what we want. I've, I've had a lot of um, broken bones and through sports injuries over the years. My knees and ankles have been operated on, and don't do well with British weather so out here it's fantastic like me bike most mornings and it's safe um and, and have a healthy healthy life and yeah I, if someone See if you can get it. you were breaking up pretty bad uh Darren. Can you repeat what you just said? Because we didn't understand a word of that. I don't think that he heard me. 
Let's see it, what happens. It's about your own life, your own decisions, your own goals, and yeah, I think we got about half of that. I think what I heard was it's all about what your dreams and aspirations are. And we have a limited network connections, but that's that's all good. That's how it is when you're sitting on two different parts of the world. Yeah, it's. Um, I say I think for. I know, sorry, say that again. I said the network connection was quite a little bit bad because you're sitting on an island on the other side of the world. So we didn't get all of what you just said, but that's kind of uh, that's the thing. How, yeah. How, how has I, that kind yeah, of I mean, being on an island? Generally speaking, mm -hmm. the internet's not too bad here. Um, the phone lines are not great. So generally speaking, in fact, I'm picking a friend up from the airport over the weekend. He's, he's a bike buddy. We're going to have a week on the bikes. And um, and I said to him just in a message a little while ago, I said, when you land, WhatsApp me. Don't text me. I won't pick the text up. I'll get the WhatsApp. So from the mobile phone perspective, you, you're better off communicating on WhatsApp, for the sake, and through the internet than you are actually on the, on the mobile phone. It's The mobile phone connection is just not great um, at all. The internet... Um, I, I've got, I'm meant to have an advanced um, internet connection, um, you know, for people that maybe come from bigger cities and sort of bigger countries, you might think it's a little, it's a little bit backward, but I don't generally have too many problems with it. Now and again, it cuts out, but change the elastic band and put a bit of sticky back plastic, a bit of duct tape, everything's fine. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's be, just about adapting and go be, on. I, I, to be fair, I spent um, yesterday afternoon um, down by the harbour, which literally is two minutes from here, and, and, and I was in uh, one of the Barcelo hotels, and you know, so I'm having tea and coffee in the Barcelo hotel and using their Wi-Fi anyway. It's, it's fine. <laughs> that works. That works. I remember when I was at the Canary Islands many years ago. I have a fun story from from there. Um, internet was just about to pop up. Here's my dog, Bam Bam, by the way. Hey. Um, Bam Bam is gorgeous. Bam 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 is deaf. And for those of you who listen, he's a big, great thing. So he, he's huge. That's why he's giving the picture for those of you who watch. Um, yeah, internet was just about to come up. And I'm sitting at an internet cafe um, writing an email. I'm a pretty fast typer. So I'm sitting there literally looking one direction and just typing. I'm not even looking at the screen. And suddenly I feel a lot of people looking at me. And I'm like, starting to look around. And sure enough, there was people looking at me because they have never seen somebody sitting like this and typing and not even looking at what she's typing. <laughs> like, and my mom walked in to the cafe to pick me up at that time. And she just stopped and looked around like, how can you get an attention like that? Just writing an email. I'm like, I didn't do anything. But at that time, Internet Cafe was super big at those islands. Is it still that big for the tourists? Well, you don't need the cafes now. Most most coffee shops, coffee bars, whatever, have got free Wi-Fi. Most hotels have got free Wi-Fi. It's so, I mean, around here, I can go to four or five hotels, just walk in. It'll automatically just link into the Wi-Fi. Um, my favourite coffee shop on the beach, actually on the beach, I can literally plug the laptop in there, do 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 whatever I want to do on the laptop, and just connect up to their Wi-Fi, and they only charge me three euros for a coffee. It's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, um, we were talking about uh, the weather, British weather, mm -hmm. wet, cold, windy nasty i can go on right keep going keep going <laughs> keep going everything like that and now puerto ventura's weather is more like sunny gorgeous explain it to me uh it's 27 here today um, these are the winter months uh, it's been a pretty good pretty good winter um it, it's pretty much all year sunshine um that's all you can say i don't think it drops below 20 degrees even at december and January, I think we was in still on the beach, sitting on the beach in December, sitting on the beach in January, you know, and uh, I, we went down there the other day, the beach, it was like 28, 
and it's crazy for the time of year but it's it's gorgeous it's absolutely gorgeous um i can't give you too much view now it's just, it's just beginning to go down behind me as it were it, it goes down about half six quarter seven this time of the evening but um, i will post but yeah, give me a bunch of pictures and i will post them in the blog post and also for me yeah sure so yeah, yeah. i can see that because it was gorgeous. Yeah, yeah um it's not a problem at all um it's an all-year all year resort. This is one of the reasons that we came here because when we first bought, and it goes back to looking at your goals and what you want to achieve, we wanted something that we knew we could go to pretty much any month of the year. And you're on holiday, you've got decent weather, you're away from the cold, damp, horrible, miserable, good old, you know, UK. And a lot of the islands in the Mediterranean, which would be common for us in Europe, uh, they're really like six or eight months resorts. They, they still have traditional winters that are pretty awful. And by definition, then when you go over there in the summer, you've, you've got crowded planes, high flight prices, um, different time zones. So we're actually on the same time zone as GMT, which is crazy. We're four hours flight. I, I guess I guess for a lot of the audience, a four hour flight's not too much, but we're a four hour flight back to the UK. And um literally i can get off of the uk and i can kind of be at mum's on my brothers in half an hour as well on my daughters so it, it's fairly convenient in real terms when i used to drive sort of seventy thousand miles a year it could take me eight nine ten hours to get home from from work and so a four-hour flight is kind of nothing in that comparison yeah um shorter it, it, it sounds weird yeah yeah it, it sounds bizarre, yeah but it but it is and so when we was looking where we was originally looking, it was all about what our goals are. And our goals were, well, we want an all-year result. So it really came to this part of the world, frankly, to be cut. Or what we didn't want to do was kind of, you know, a Thailand, a Cuba, a Caribbean type thing. It was we didn't really want long haul, long haul. We wanted something that was still, you know, friends and family, um, uh, comfortable as it were. And you, you just wouldn't believe the, the, the price of the flights to get down here. It's just shocking. It costs more to get a train to go into London than it does to get a flight to come to this island. It's just ridiculous. Are you serious? No, I'm serious, yeah. I'm serious, Celia, yeah. Um, I, I went back home just recently, just um, about a month ago for four days. I paid 18, 19 pounds for a flight each way. <laughs> what the Seriously. in the world? Seriously, yeah. And... So all the time that we've been coming out here um, for the house over the sort of last four or five years that we've had it, you know, M Michelle just sits there going, well, the, the flights have gone down to 20 quid, 30 quid. I'm talking about pounds sterling, obviously, for your audience. Um, and, and maybe, I mean, we've paid as little as seven pounds to come out here. It's just, it's ridiculous, you know. And it's, it's what it is. It's a cheap and cheerful flight with Ryan here. But we've got no luggage because all oh, this is a home, so all our clothes, all our belongings are in the home anyway. So all we do is just take a rucksack and that's it. You know, and my daughter's coming out next week and you know, I know she's paid again about twenty, maybe twenty five pounds for a flight. It's just wow. you know, and and again, those things are quite important for us when we was researching as well, because it, it just makes it affordable to do. It makes it affordable for your family to come over and have long weekends or whatever without feeling like you're in a hotel hotel which is costing an arm and leg to stay it can be a very kind of cheap cheerful you know getaway for for a number of people hence the reason i've got some bike buddies coming over as well soon and you know i think they've paid well i know they've just paid 30 pound for their flights that was it 30 pound each way and they'll probably go over here but we'll ride around the island have a few jars of happy juice get a curry as every british person has to do and <laughs> <laughs> get a curry you don't get a Sunday roast anymore in England. You get a curry. Um, You're right. <laughs> <laughs> no. So uh, how is the cost of living? If the travel is that much cheaper, you're an, on an island. That tells me it should be a little bit more expensive. No? no. This is this is this is seriously this is embarrassing, and I mean this is seriously embarrassing. These these are things that made our decisions very very easy. Um, I'm not sure if people are aware of the economy in the UK, but I'm sure it sort of resonates around the world that we've got allegedly an, economy, an energy crisis. Interest rates have actually gone through the roof. There's a thing in the UK called council tax, which is just legalised theft. And my house would be about 
£200 a month council tax. Uh, over here, I pay 400 a year. Oh, my goodness. Um, I have a maintenance. I have a maintenance charge on this property because of the um, pool and the gardens and such, and that's uh, seventy euros a month. Uh, my elect the electric, all the utility bills in the UK for ridiculous. And I was paying oh, yeah. at one point. I was paying as little as about eighty pounds a month, and then that went up to well over two hundred pound a month, three hundred nearly. And Jeez. I've got no. I've actually. I don't even have a radiator in there. I don't have any heat in this home. So to yeah. my right, that way, this home is actually on three levels. It's got four bathrooms, so four bedrooms, three, mm -hmm. three bathrooms. Mm -hmm. And it's on four levels. And every level is a glass front even places south. So the sun just comes in all day. Nice. I, I don't even own an electric heater, a radiator or whatever. I, I walk around the evening still in T-shirts. Um, my energy bills are... I, for electric, my last electric bill the other day was less than 30 euros for the month. Nice. <laughs> seriously, <laughs> seriously. And um, my water bill, uh, again, you're on a meter here. I'm sure the audience understand that. Yeah. Um, and uh, my water bill last month was 22 euros. And back home, I'm paying nearly 80 pounds a month. I say back home, as in the UK. Yeah. I was paying 80 pounds a month for water. And wow. Once you start, once you start seeing this, I mean, so when we got really lucky, I managed to buy this house cash. I was just very lucky over the years with a good job, and I'd saved some money. And so, again, I got in a situation where this house was sitting here without a mortgage. I knew what the running costs were, and it, it was a case of if we don't do this now, we never will. This is crazy, you know. This is a, a beautiful opportunity, and even our food, our food bills. We've noticed our food bills are ridiculously low. We we don't. We probably don't eat as much now because I don't think we binge eat. I think what happens when you get in, in say, in the UK, you all get cold, sit indoors, watching whatever on TV and just junk, junk binging. And, and we kind of don't do that. I've never eaten some more salads in my life. I think every food every day is something with a salad. Um, right. Allegedly, it's healthy. Uh, but we've stopped a lot of that binge stuff. It's just, yeah, it, 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 it feels good. Um, so you're basically out moving more because the weather allows you to. Yeah, out. yeah, I think so. Yeah, I mean the one the, the one thing I'd say to people as well is you know we I think we try to approach this with common sense. We didn't just jump into things. And and whilst I know the town and when we mates or my brother or my family come over, we know which restaurants to go to and which bars to go to and have some fun. Um, from, from our perspective on a day to day, we live here. We don't treat this as a holiday. I, it, it's easy for people to come out here and literally go down the Irish bar every night, get completely lashed up and, uh, you know, and, <laughs> and, and, and act silly and, and, and be silly. And we, we don't do that. So, you know, Michelle and I will go out a few times a month and have a nice meal right. and, 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 a, and a couple of drinks and such as we just would do as our standard life. But we don't treat here as being a holiday it would be very easy and very foolish i think to treat it as a holiday where you become a little bit reckless with your behavior with your money and and all sorts of things so um we've got all the things and, and we we set days this, this is really crazy we set days where we, it's our day so um you know j just recently michelle decided we were going to walk up a volcano okay. as you do so, <laughs> 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 Luckily, there's not much coming out of it. But, but, and, you know, she's plotted some really obscure sides of the island for us to, to go to in a couple of weeks. So it'll be a day out. We'll take a picnic, have a picnic and a day out and enjoy ourselves. And it, again, it's just embracing where you're at, the environment, what, what you do. Um, and it's, you know, you, you, I think you know as well as I do in, in the colder climates like the UK or, you know, I say Scandinavia, you, you, you're not really going to get a lot of chances to get outside and it, kind of enjoy life and just sit and what I mean, I, I take my bike out in the mornings a lot, just as the sun's coming up and it's just unbelievable. You know, the roads are really safe, which is unusual because I'm used to very dangerous roads back in the UK. Uh, so much so I rarely ride on the road. Do you it's the other side now. Yeah, that's it. I'm used to that now. It's OK. Yeah, it's the other side. Um, but I, I ride up and down the coast most mornings, and honestly, it's just you, you pinch yourself at times. It's so beautiful, it's so peaceful. The sun coming up over the ocean, 
and it kind of just resonates onto you as you're riding. And it, it is great because you, you get to see a, a, a lot of everything, but obviously you get to see a lot of holly makers and, you know, lots of people out in the mornings running and um, power walking and things like this. And it, you just think this is, this really is how life should be. It's just, it is fantastic. It really is. And, you know, I'll come back from a bike ride and my wife's just finished up in the gym, so she's done a little bit. And then we move on with the rest of our day. Um, and there's no stress. There's no commuting. As I said, you, I used to travel 70 or 1,000 miles a year driving up and down the UK, stuck in traffic like everyone else is, roadworks, traffic jams, accidents. Um, and lots of, you know, with the, it. Yeah, and, you know, you're on the road at 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning. You don't know what time you're going to get home. And then you've missed someone's birthday, you've missed a family meal or all those things and sacrifices that people do for their families. And we, we do tell ourselves it's worth it because you've got a family, we're providing with a breadwinner. It's not good for you. It's not good for your long term kind of mental well-being, your long term uh, uh, outlook on life. It, it, it hurts you. It, you know, you lose sleep, sleep deprivation, junk food. You're not living a healthy life, um, but you convince yourself you're doing the right thing by your family. Um, what do you do that's, that's the reality and we, and we all get into that don't we we all get into that sort of cycle right at various stages yeah what did your family think when you announced that hey we're gonna move bye bye what did they think well i've i've got a really funny story about buying a house um so are you familiar with a show um a place in the sun yes okay so when we bought this house um there was a few legal technicalities when we bought it and I, I came back to the UK because of work and I left Michelle here just to sort the solicitors out and whatever else. Um, and I was at work one day and I randomly just sent my mum some pictures of this home. And she says to me, that looks nice. Are you booking a holiday? I said, I think it's your next holiday. So she says, what do you mean? So I said, I've just bought it. So she went, what are you going to buy it? I went, no, I've just bought it. And she went, what do you mean you bought it? I said, I've just bought it. So, it. We, we, didn't, so we didn't tell anyone we was buying it, obviously. But a, a few days later, my mum messaged me and she went, I've just seen your house. I said, when did you see my house? She went, I'm sitting here watching a place in the sun. It's your house. She said, I'm watching it. Seriously, here's the link. I didn't know this. The people we bought this home from actually bought it from a place in the sun. <laughs> <laughs> and there's an episode of it on a place in the sun it's crazy it's a crazy crazy and like oh you can God. see the outside you can see the outside the door number the inside it's you know the, the same sort of the walls are still the same whatever it just really is bonkers so so to us, that was just hilarious so we we decided before we bought the house we were going to keep it quiet because my experience in life is a lot of people don't share your dream they don't share your, your goals and they don't understand it and you, you'll get people that will always be, oh, you can't do that, you can't do this. And, and we just didn't want to get negged out. We didn't want to get into schoolboy playground conversations. What, it was important to us, and that was really all mad. And, and maybe that sounds selfish, but that was, that was how we viewed it. Um, so then um, when we went to, to sell the house, I, I kind of, again, we said we hadn't told people who was coming out here. Um, even though we was living in a caravan, I think the clue might have been there. But we didn't want to announce it because, and, and this is this is just genuine, we, we didn't want to jump the gun. We couldn't really see how the visa aspect was going to work or not. Um, it was out of our hands. So, yes, we wanted to be here, but we weren't going to jump the gun and start announcing it from the you know, highest hilltop. So we kind of just kept a few things close to our chest that we was looking at options. We may do this, we may do that. Um, and was being very vague, to be fair. Um, and again, a, a lot of people that would would otherwise try and neg us out, we just didn't tell them anything. Um, uh, you know, my daughter knew that was important. Um, my brother knew that was important. That was right. about it, really. And and then it got to a point where it was clearly gonna gonna be okay. So, you know, I kind of just said to my mum that we were gonna do. Um, my mum hadn't said too much. I think genuinely. For me, mum, she wants her kids to be happy, but they're a little baby, so she also wants them under her wing. It's human nature. Right, right. <laughs> it's, it's, it, um, the, the area where it went bad was my employers, to be fair. That, that's where it went bad. So they didn't take it well. Um, well, so that, 
<laughs> that was 11 and a half, 11 and a half years. And it kind of, it, it didn't end great. I, I, you know, I think they saw Sorry. me as a, yeah, I think they just saw me as a little bit of, um, uh, you yeah, know, maybe a traitor, maybe I should have stayed put, maybe I've deserted them or whatever, you know, but again, I think there's a lot of, um, uh, you can get a lot of heat up tension, a lot of day to day pressure work that comes into it. And, um, you know, uh, I think those bridges have been healed a little bit anyway in time that's passed. So that's all good. Um, you said in the heat in a moment that everyone, everyone probably regrets at the time, but you move on. Exactly. Well, when you, I know from my own experience telling people, yeah, I'm, I'm saying bye bye and I'm moving from Sweden to Texas, people thought we were completely nuts, which we probably yeah. were. You know, yeah, no, I, 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 I would get it, but I understand that, that you'd be surrounded by people that wouldn't. And, and, and we, we heard a lot of people like, why would you want to do that? Why are you going out there? It's, why not? You know, right. um, what, what what if you're ill? I go and see a doctor. Well, what if you need a hospital? Well, it's five miles up the road. Yeah, it is, you know, and I mean, I, I, I went to the Maldives once and um, my, my sister-in-law decided to, I said to her, don't drink too much. It's, it's a weird heat out here. Well, obviously she didn't listen. So, <laughs> she, so she decided to have more than she should have done, fell over um, and, and actually kind of half hurt herself and and um and she's a bit of called a doctor i said it's gonna be fun this is the maldives it's gonna be fun so we had to get a seaplane in from <laughs> for her to pick her up and but but the thing is it was still there in a couple of hours in reality and and the point being is don't matter where you go in the modern world if you're real you're going to be ill if you need hospitalization you're going to need it and do you know what it, it there's a way there's a way the system's going to get to you and, and i guarantee you that my sister-in-law got got seen to and got cared for far quicker with a seaplane coming out to an island than she would have done if she was in the queue at the nhs in england because <laughs> they would have just sent her packing for about eight hours <laughs> you can't get this you have literally got to be carrying a wooden box into a hospital in the uk to get a doctor to see you it's just right. unbelievable I, I, you know, I, I, I don't have any experience really from UK's hospital system, so maybe I should just shut my mouth. But I've seen <laughs> working in EMS here, I've seen a lot of, of stories, a lot of documentaries about EMS systems all around the world and, and hospital systems. And I'm just amazed of can you even see a doctor at all unless you're like literally dying in the UK? Yeah. Yeah, like, it, it, is, it is like that. Yeah, seriously, it is like wow. that. It's, um, yeah. You know, they, 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 the UK will probably come up to you and the, the first thing they'll ask you to do is to sign some kind of form and you say, what's that? And they'll say, that's organ transplant. Or, you know, because <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> that's about how bad you've got to be to get in. Honestly, it's, it, you just, <laughs> you really would not want to, you really wouldn't want to be here in the UK right now. It's, I, I know I sound cynical, but it's I'm born and bred there. And I, I've seen it. I've seen it decline so bad in you know in, in 40, 50 years. It's embarrassing. It really is. Um, and I, I wake up most days and go, "Thank God I'm not involved in that anymore." I've just. <laughs> but right. if, if I'm if I'm going to be ill, I'm going to be ill. Um, and there's probably little I can do about that from a human nature perspective. But I've got two doctors within a mile of me here, and I do have a hospital um, just the other side of the airport, and that's literally a ten minute drive. And as part of the visa, I got a, a, a private health insurance package. It, it, you know, it, every day of your life, I, I can, I, I did, um, I do crazy things. Like, so I've done a bike ride several times, London to Paris. That's 300 miles. You start in London, get off at Paris at the Eiffel Tower. It's nonstop 300 miles. And, and I've done it with my brother a few years for lots of different charities and, you know, like cancer research and Alzheimer's and these things. And, we're the wrong side of 40 when we're doing it. Um, if there is a right side of 40, I'm not sure. But we're the wrong side of 40 when we started doing it. In fact, it could be said we're the wrong side of 50. I'm being polite. And, <laughs> and, and um, but, but all of our families are like, you're going to kill yourself. You can't do this. You can't do that. What if you get run over? What if you're this? What if you're that? And it's like, you can get run over on, a, on your bike just anywhere in the UK. I can fall off a bus and get run over. I can have an accident tomorrow and something can happen. And if you 
worry about that in life. You won't actually get out of bed and do anything. So you've got to embrace it for what because it is and enjoy every day because you don't know when it's last. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Um, exactly. Yeah. yeah my my mum my mum will say to me things like, you know, what's the, what's the water like today? I go, the water's great. And she goes, go for a swim. I go, yeah, go for a swim. So you think, does he go far? Uh, no, not really. Why is that? Well, yeah, it's dangerous. The water's out there. You know, because apparently they've got sharks. I mean, they've got blue those in Australia. Um, you know, and uh, you do know how to swim, don't you, Mum, uh, Darren? And I'm like, Mum, I still do triathlons. It's a mile swim in a triathlon. <laughs> I'm okay in the water. <laughs> you know, I've done scuba diving. I'm not too bad. <laughs> it's amazing what your parents will say. It, honestly, it's just, it really is. And, it, 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 and, and that's what I mean. <laughs> You know, and you know, you could go in a swimming pool and have a, a get cramp in a swimming pool, and you know, I mean, a normal swimming pool anywhere, you can get cramp for whatever reason and get yourself into difficulties. And it's clearly when you panic that your body gets heavy and you, you start to have a few challenges. But um, you know, every day of life is what it is. You make the most of it and you enjoy it. And things can go wrong any day of the week, wherever you are. You haven't got to be in the UK for things to be good or be out here for things to go bad. Um, all you've got to do for our perspective here, we you know I say everything we've done is planned for. We've had to change a few legalities. So, from a from a legal perspective, and again, this may be relevant for, for some of your audience. Um, the, the legal rules here are slightly different in the event of death. So, we've obviously got a will from a UK perspective um, because I'm obviously UK UK domicile as they call it, um, and we've had to update that to incorporate um, a Spanish will. Uh, with regards to the Spanish legal system for deaths and inheritance tax and whatever else. But the most important thing is that if we died yesterday, the, the Spanish system tries to bury you very, very quickly. So unless you've got something in place, um, literally within a couple of days, you'll be cremated, buried or whatever else. And so it's important for, if you like, expats coming into this country to understand that because the traditional British way would be, as you know, all, all get gathered around a stony old Saxon church um in, in black dress a few weeks later uh so you kind of need those arrangements in place um to to follow through that kind of tradition if that's what you want and to be fair most of your friends and family would probably um certainly want that kind of arrangement in place yeah they kind of it'd be hurtful for them i think if they found out a week later that you'd already died and been buried sort of thing so um yeah, so they're, they're just little things to be aware of and look into, to be fair. Um, yeah, I was, I was just about to ask, what things have you learned when you moved over in terms of legalities and, and changes you had to basically take an aspect for that you didn't expect at all? Yeah, the the the, the guarantees was fine. We, we kind of, because we... We relied very. We had really great support since since buying the house. The estate agent we bought the house from is is unbelievable on these islands. He's very very well known on these islands. But he comes from uh, Leicestershire in England in the first place. He's been out here for sort of twenty five years. And so when we bought the house, his process he set us up with a solicitor. He set us up with a bank out here. Um, and and then everyone around has been so lovely to us genuinely um you know the local shops they, they they know we live here now and i think they treat us as slightly different than than they would do a resident and um but it, it's just sometimes the little bits of red tape that i mentioned like the four trips to drive to different towns and offices and whatever else and um uh, to get to get the, the car registered it, i think it's four four different stages of giving our fingerprints to get an id card to which wow. is our true residency card yeah it's just weird things um and so but i've paid i've paid the legal team to do this all the way through so although i kind of panic and get stressed and worried at times in, in reality i just leave it to those people to deal with and, and try and relax the uh, the language is, is fun because obviously I speak Essex and that's a language of its own. Um, it's just a, a weird, a weird corner of the universe that just <laughs> doesn't exist outside a thirty mile radius. Um, right. So we're we're beginning to pick up and embrace a little bit of the of the language. Uh, the reality is it's not as bad as you think because a lot of obviously it, English is a quite a common language anyway, so a lot of people speak English of some form or another, which is a bit embarrassing that you're relying on your own tongue. Um, 
But even in the modern world, you've got the apps on your phones. You just speak it in your phone, it translates it. And you can, if you get into an environment where you're not too sure, it's not difficult. It, it really isn't. So, you, you, again, you just find ways to navigate through these things um, and, and, and embrace it as what it is, which is fun. Um, you know, and we haven't really found too many problems as, as such. It's probably to say the car, the insurance on the car was weird. Oh, yeah, the insurance in the car, the building didn't exist. When we had to go to get it insured, it was really crazy. I guess, like, it's just Google Earth and Google Maps, but we spent, like, a whole morning walking around the town, literally every street, to find just an insurance office, which didn't seem to exist. And you sit, it's, yeah, it's just really weird. It, it, these are just the weird things that happen. Um, people working Christmas. Out there Christmas. It, it, yeah, on Google Earth and Google Maps, it was like, you know, house number five, road, high street. And when you got there, there was no building there. And it turned out to be a mile away. It was just bizarre. Um, and a, a little man walking his dog was able to direct us. It's just incredible, really. It's, it's just a strange world. And you just have to laugh at these things because yeah. you're so used to living in this high stressed environment in, in England, which I'm guessing maybe a number of listeners are, are in the same situation and event you it takes about three months just to relax and chill out and then just get into actually i'm just going to enjoy life and nothing really bothers you nothing's going to phase you i'm just i'm just going to enjoy it it's just christmas was fantastic they, these are really weird things for you by the way so you mentioned weird things here christmas as such is not christmas as we would know it so okay but we did get about 60 motorbikes driving around town on Christmas Eve, all dressed up as Father Christmas, which was a fantastic experience. Wow. Yeah. And and their Christmas is, I think it's the 5th and 6th of January. So they had a great big uh, celebration in the main town here. So the, the thing for us is um, when the town are going to celebrate, we get involved. We're part of the town. We're part of the community. And the island's got and the island's got its own little customs. There's um, twenty minutes up the road. I know in, in a couple of months' time there's um, another festival. Which uh, I'm not sure which bad person. It's probably a British guy again turned up with a ship like 400 years ago and decided he was going to bang a few cannons out and invade. Okay. And, 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 the, and the and the farmers managed to hold them off, as it were. You know, it's a bit sort of Jack Sparrowish. But but they celebrate it, and and so we're going to go down that day. And you know, it's a festival. There'll be you know, there'll be a carnival, there'll be a, a, a party on the beach, and that, that that kind of stuff is really good. The the, the Christmas the Christmas experience here, which was my first and Michelle's most time of experiencing the Christmas here in that context, was really good because it was their local tradition. It was a carnival, a local tradition. It's slightly different than you know, if you like my, my upbringing or upbringing perhaps as a as a European style Christmas. Um, and they do have a lot of bank holidays, and they've got strange religious purposes. But it's great to experience it and experience that culture and and, and embrace it. it. It's it's really bizarre. And then you kind of, when I was a kid, a few years ago, um, um, it was like shops closed on a Wednesday afternoon, and that was it. Um, I think they closed about eleven o'clock on a Saturday from memory as well, and they didn't open on a Sunday. And because yeah. now, because now, unless you can actually open. For, seven days a week, 24 seven, you know, you're not going to get a license. And it's brilliant to be here and you go, oh, it's Sunday, everything's closed. Okay, great. It's a bank holiday. Okay, great. <laughs> and it, it, it's, but it just, to me, it feels so much nicer, so much better. It's just, but they have uh, siesta there? I remember when I was there many years ago, they had siesta and they were closed like from noon to 7 p.m. or something like, I can't remember the exact um, every yeah, day we, we um i think i mentioned a minute ago we're actually the clues in our our place is called chipmunk mountain which is where at the top of it is about well on the bike it's the worst three kilometers to get back home basically it don't matter what the distance of the bike ride is three kilometers to get back home from the bottom of chipmunk mountain to get you know in my old legs it's not good but we're getting some road works done on this hill for a while and it, and it's exactly what you say. If you if you drive down the hill somewhere between twelve o'clock and two o'clock, you won't see anything at all. <laughs> That's it. It's ghost town. You know, come back at four o'clock, they'll be working. You know, eight o'clock in the morning, they'll be working. But yeah, that that kind of two hours in the day, that's still a popular time for people not to do too much. It's too and hot. I, well, I'll be honest with you. I'm kind of in that mode myself. So what what, and what I do is I'm probably up 
half seven, eight o'clock, I can be doing stuff on my laptop. I can be doing a bit of work. Or that time of day is a great time to take the bike out for a couple of hours. But once it gets to about 12, one o'clock, where I'm kind of sitting now and with the sun coming through the glass, um, I normally just close up for a couple of hours myself and we'll just wander down the beach, have a coffee and chill out, come back again at three o'clock and, and then I can carry on and do what I'm doing till eight, nine o'clock. And it's slightly different. You can still work traditional length of hours if you want to, but it'd be in a slightly different way because it's nothing worse than sitting here when it's 28, 29 degrees. It's coming through, it's feeling hot, you're feeling a bit sort of sticky and jaded. Well, go out and embrace it, go for a walk, have a quick swim, um, come back in yeah. an hour's time. Mm. Give a little bit brain rest and just see something else on a computer or whatever you're looking at all day long. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So uh, it, it just enables you to do it. And and as I said, like yesterday, we just I closed the laptop up and we went down, we had a coffee um, on, the, on the beach, walked into the Barcelo Hotel, got a coffee in there, opened the laptop, picked up a few emails, done a little bit of messaging. And, and that's what a life. It, you just you you pinch yourself. You, I, I saw someone put on, um, I think it was Facebook, either Facebook or LinkedIn today. I can't remember which one. It was off the top of my head, but someone obviously been visiting here, like a tourist had been visiting and put pictures up, and it's of the harbour, and, and and I kind of saw it, and he's obviously he's very complimentary about it, and the boats and the coffee shops and whatever else, and, and at times it almost feels embarrassing to think, yeah, I get that every day. I, I live here. It's so gorgeous. And it's, and it, you, you know, you're so true, genuinely, you're just truly humble to say, I, I can experience this, whether right. it's for a year, two years, 10 years, you know, hopefully I've got a few more years left in me. Um, I hope but so. Yeah, me too. I'd be a bit disappointed <laughs> if not. <laughs> and um, I, I, my, my daughter, not so much. She's her inheritance, apparently. So she's probably counting away. <laughs> Bless her. Wow. wow. <laughs> she went. She'll, she'll be out here next week sharing stories of her wedding plans. I think the word dad will come to mind quite a lot, as will ka chang ka chang. And I'm sure every parent knows exactly what I'm saying right now. Right. Um, uh, so, but, but yeah, it's when you see things like that, the people on put on social media, and I say, I've got a friend that's coming out. He's staying at a hotel I've stayed at before. It's literally, you know, not even a mile away from me here. And he keeps messaging me, yeah, what's it like, what's it like? And I'm sending his wife pictures and probably similar pictures that I've sent yourself. And she's like, oh, my God, oh, my God, I can't wait to get out there. And I yeah. said, forget, him, forget that, you're not going to want to go back home. Right. It's just, yeah, you're just not going to want to go back home. Um, so, so, yeah, it's very, it's, it's we, we've only been here since, no, fully, as it were, we've only been here since um, October. Uh, but, you know, you'd, you'd, I'd have to be, seriously ill shouting screaming drugged up to get me back to the uk do you miss no anything by the uk any food except friends you always miss friends you know anything i've got more? um uh, joking aside again halfway up this chipmunk mountain we've got generally the best steakhouse steak restaurant on the yard it's been voted in all the magazines as the best steakhouse next to that there's a good old curry house which has been voted the best curry house on the island and it is awesome it really is fantastic next to that is an irish bar i mean what do you need that's it so what 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 is there to miss um I, I genuinely no um uh apart from the obvious um you know a little bit of family stuff at times you know but i talk to my daughter most days i still talk to my mum most days and you know, and the strange thing with my mum, bless her, she's in her 80s. She's now learned the art of Zoom. So we don't actually phone each other now. We've had Zoom appointments. So I, I walk the laptop around where we are and she gets to see, you know, where we're at and the views. And, and it brings it more personal for her, which is great. Um, what's really nice is, is um, it, it, I guess it gets you really kind of excited, what I'm going to say to you now. But I say my daughter's coming out next week. You know, I can't tell how much we're looking forward to that. Um, and then typically, she's she's a daughter. I'm a dad, so she's my princess. And um, I love it. I love it a bit. And I haven't seen her for a long time. And it'd be great to, you know, great to spend a bit of time with her again. Uh, the same with my brother when he comes out in a month's time and whatever. So um, 
before we moved here, I've come out here on a regular basis with some mates and we just will spend a long weekend, take the bikes out. I'm afraid it's a sad sight because we all wear Lycra. Anyone who's into cycling knows everyone has to wear Lycra and it's not a good look. It should be banned. It, it should yeah. be against all human nature, really. Um, so especially old men that are too old and too fat to wear it that <laughs> kind of don't don't care as it were um, for one of a phrase um, but they're, they're great weekends and they're, they're really great times because and i mean it's in a genuine way i've lost a lot of people in recent years mm -hmm. um, it's very sad you know f friends for different reasons some through covid some through ill health some have just been taken too early for different reasons Right. And all of us that still come out and interact and, you know, look forward to these weekends, it actually means a lot for us at this stage of life to be able to to share these moments, to enjoy it. Um, and I've done sport all my life uh, and I've done sport at a very high level. I represented country and Great Britain and things like this. And, and I've got what would have been sporting rivals 30, 40 years ago. They, they come out here and we just we have a laugh and we enjoy life. We're not rivals anymore. We just, you know as it were, colleagues and, and, and people that are good friends now, and, you know, self-respect and these sort of things. And it's, it's so nice. It feels nice. It feels like um, uh, a really good place to be, you know, sort of physically and being in the island, but also emotionally and your well-being. It's, if anyone's got a dream, you've got to do it. Seriously, wherever your dream is, even if it's Cuba. Go to Cuba. I love Cuba. I think it's fantastic. I've it might change now. It might change now. I don't know, but I loved it. I've been there a few times. On the KO Islands, just north of the, the mainland. So uh, my next question is, you've been here now six, seven months. Do you see yourself moving away from there in a couple of years to explore something else? Or are you just, right as, at least of right now, content in, in just I, I, your yeah, life? Yeah, we are massively content. Um, the, the answer to your question could be different if I didn't own this house, but I own this house. Um, so if we moved, it would be the they'll say the problematic heartache of, of selling it buying somewhere else etc which right. i don't really see us doing if we rented it might be different because you might decide oh you know we'll go and spend six months in wherever see the family in sydney or something in australia or um you know i'll tell you what go down the caribbean for six months and just grow here because yeah. i'm sure i can still get some somewhere um but but no we're very you know seriously we're very very settled very content here it, it, it's got I guess leading up to it, we knew we knew what this island was, and this this island had a feel for us. There's four main islands in the Canaries. There's Future Venture, there's Lanzarote, uh, Tenerife, and Grand Canary, the four core islands. And we've been to them all many times on holidays. And for whatever reason, this was the one that always felt good for us. It just had a feel to us. It, it had that. It always drew us in. It always drew us back. And so when it come down to potentially buying a home out here, this was always going to be the island. And so um, we were probably settled with the island and the idea before we bought the house. And I think that made the transition a lot easier. I think it's a hard transition if if we'd have sold the house in the UK and literally just put a pin on a map and say, where I do, I think it would have been harder. Yeah, I think it would have been a harder transition. I mean, probably we still enjoyed it and embraced it, but it would have been a harder transition um so now we're we genuinely we we looked at maybe 15 20 houses before we bought this all over the island we was here for about a week just looking at houses and we've never ever had a regret that this was the wrong house genuinely we've, and we've even gone back since we've been here and just drove past some of the other places and we both said the same thing that, that this this right home one. Yeah, this home was the right one for us. And we know why it was the right one for us. And it, what was bizarre was that when we was looking, we, we did the strange thing and we didn't talk all the time we was looking. We kept our own notes. And and collectively, when we put our notes together, this was number one for us both, collectively. Really odd, really odd. Um, so, yeah, to answer your question, I wouldn't, I don't see us going back to the UK anytime soon unless we have to. Too cold. Um, yeah, too cold. <laughs> we we are aware that there may be a time you come back to the UK, and I suspect that will be health related if we have to. Um, I, I think that's a, a certain circle of, of life that may or may not come around. So 
you know, if you go down with it, seriously, if you go down with the, you know, like the Parkinson's or dementia or whatever, I know it seems sound cruel. Wow, um, you're taking the well, horse right away, huh? Yeah, but you know, they, you've got to be realistic. Someone, someone may go down with it. it. Happens to people, and so if you, if your health, if your health becomes an issue, that's going to have an impact. That's that's really how we would see it potentially going back to the UK. Um, but uh, beyond that, I, I just wouldn't want to. I'm just, I'm too happy and relaxed out here. Genuinely, um, uh, we've got a name for the UK. I won't tell you what it is. <laughs> It'll sound wrong for your audience, but. <laughs> And then your strong sense of humor. <laughs> that, that's but, it but, is. Welcome to life. Yeah. That, that's just how it is. That's uh, yeah. It, it's something real it is. <laughs> but but um and it's not Cruella. Um but but yeah, so for us, you know, we we see this as being this was always our home. When I was when I was in the UK working and Michelle was here and I come out here regularly every other weekend and spend time this always felt like a sanctuary it always felt like a beautiful place and the more we kept coming here the worse it was going back to the uk yeah it was it was like the minute you get off a plane back in the uk it was like oh god i'm back here i can't face it i just don't want to know get me. and it was like you refer to here as home it's just really really strange um so you just wish you would have moved yeah. for uh, earlier than what you did I, I should have. Do you want me to put a light on, by the way? I can see it's getting dark around me. Give me two seconds. <laughs> there you go. Somebody put it on. Now, sorry about that. I didn't, I didn't realize all of a sudden it was like being in the pictures, wasn't it? Um, no, I saw you, though. Yes. To, <laughs> to, to, to answer, it's probably better with my face blacked out, wasn't it? My face for radio. <laughs> that wasn't what um, you said. <laughs> <laughs> so so to I answer said. your question yeah to answer your question yeah if, if there's a regret it's i didn't do this years ago it really is i in my youth and i'm talking about youth um long before i met my wife um I, and i spent a lot of time in australia with some family and uh, my god over the years i really wish i didn't come back from from those trips um and, and then you, you start doing your life and you have a family and you've got a you know, important jobs with blue chip companies and you think you're important and you think you're doing things. Um, but the timing is never right. And and then, yeah, it just the timing was right. And it was definitely, if not now, never. Uh, so we kind of just just jumped in it, um, embrace life. I think a lot changed for us, probably like a lot of people with, with COVID. COVID was had a big impact on, on me in my head and the way I, I viewed life. Um, and, and before we knew what COVID was, um, and I mean, right at the outbreak of it, before we really knew what it was, and you know, I think most countries have got their own horror stories as well. Oh yeah. But um, my brother and I was just about to do a bike ride, which is Lands End to John O'Groats, so it's the longest ride, uh, point to point in the UK. Mm -hmm. um, and we were meant to do that about a month after COVID, and we'd gone out on a training ride, and we'd done 150 miles on a bike on a Saturday, as you do, just wake yeah. up and do 150 miles, obviously, you know. Um, and two days later, he's in a coma with COVID, um, and it's just bonkers. And yep. um, I had um, probably I probably had about ten days on the bounce where I'm talking to the doctor, who's telling me, "Get your affairs in order. He won't make it through the night. We can't keep him alive. He's not going to make it." And that's and but they literally tell you that the phone goes down, and so when you phone up. All you can hear is footsteps walking down a corridor then footsteps coming back and then literally yeah he won't make it and he just puts the phone down and it was so bizarre it was just so surreal because then i've got his niece and nephew what do i tell them right. um my mum would be been recovering from a heart attack anyway so what do i tell me mum and it was weird it was just it was just and and his wife was in denial and it was like oh my god it was just like it was the most weird experience of, of my life um and then but it's been life-changing for him so he's he's couldn't really carry on work since he's only works like half half a day part-time he's got long-term issues with his lungs with his kidneys um he's got long-term muscle fatigue he's not the same man he couldn't do 150 miles on a bike he would do about an hour and that's about it now um it's that life-changing for him really 
but he's still alive. That's the main thing. And you've got to embrace life, you know. Um, and then I got it differently as well. Mm, yeah, it really does. It really does. Um, I, I couldn't begin to tell you. And, and then when I got it, and, and I, generally what happened was because of the things he had gone through, I'd learned a lot. And then when I got it, I'd always been counting. I had one of these little machines that you put your finger in, which does your oxygen levels. And, and I got a phone call from the NHS and they said, if your oxygen levels go down to 93, you're going to have to come into hospital. Okay. That so must be early. Up, and they said, what is it? They said, what is it? I said, 94. So I was on 89. <laughs> and, um, and I thought, there's no way. There's no way I'm going into hospital. It's a one-way ticket. So I just decided I was going to fight it out indoors. And um, it it was it for me it was a really weird experience because i generally couldn't breathe and i'm thinking how do you kind of concentrate to try and breathe this is really bizarre um and and i got it in i think like the january late january um when was ill and we came out to this house i think on the august and i couldn't ride up the hill i couldn't ride the bike up the hill to get home i had to get off and walk it and i'm thought this can't be right this is life can't be like this and it took me a long long time to get my lungs working I, I because of the pool out here in the ocean out here i've been spending a lot of time swimming to strengthen my lungs up and um yeah that that whole process i was i was there i was working seven days a week we had 50 60 people all the office on a furlough and i was working seven days a week to keep the company going keep people's jobs afloat and when you come through it you kind of just question why <laughs> just, you, you honestly just question why yeah you're just sitting there thinking this has nearly killed me and I don't feel right and I'm not the same person and why have I just put myself through this and before long you're back on the hamster wheel before long you know you're back in the, the, the whole rat race that, that, that is, is modern society and it, it just become a bigger and bigger why just floating through your head and if you don't change you're not going to get a chance to change it's going to be taken away from you um and so these were the big motives for me really as to, to why we took the decision and yeah 100 percent the right thing to do 100 i am so glad you did it yes yeah, so, like, <laughs> <laughs> so <am I. laughs> but, but coming back to me mum, this is really weird as well so because so many things were out of our control as to when literally what we we didn't know when the visas were going to come through it was like it got delayed and whatever else and we went round my mum's one day i literally just put a dozen storage boxes in her loft and in her garage and she said what are you doing i said well i think we're going to get the visas for any day now so, <laughs> so i'll go somewhere to store everything so, right so, and she's like you're kidding me i went no no and she's going while you're up there can you get rid of this stuff and, and i'm up in mum's loft and and i mean i'm sure everyone can relate to this my mum's got stuff in the loft for where me and my brother were kids at junior school, six, seven years of age. It's just crazy. It really is. And she's going, can you clear the loft out? And I'm like, no, mum, I'm adding junk to it. I can't clear it out. <laughs> it's going to take a week to clear it out. <laughs> it's taking a lifetime to get up there. Right, if not even more, because it's always a lot of stuff on the loft or in the garage or whatever storage it, you have. It, it, you've got to have a took room somewhere, haven't you? Everyone has their took room. <laughs> right, absolutely. You know. Uh, so yeah it's it, it, if really i mean there's my, my experience is the journey genuinely if you think the journey out of you know 10 is bad the journey is going to be 11 um in terms of a bad scale um but but literally try and keep your sanity and just hold your nerve and worry about the end game um, is it the seven steps and it start with the end in mind um, uh, and th think about the end game just just focus on the end game because you will get there and the minute you get there and the minute you get to that destination and you realize this is your future and this is your dreams you're living and your aspirations and your goals your outlook on life is going to change overnight and you are yeah. going to be so so happy you are we, we spent months just pinching ourselves literally pinching ourselves are we really here are we are we really doing this is, it, and we just wake up some nights and it's like i can't believe it we look at our bedroom window and it generally the only thing missing is julie andrews we've just got these gorgeous flowing mountain ranges and everything else and you look at it in the morning and you think 
I can't believe this. Are we here? You know, I know what the view was when I was living back in the UK. <laughs> you know, I, have, have we have, have we really got? And, and everyone everyone can do it. Yeah, right. everyone can do it. I know in life everything is a barrier. You know, society, friends, family, income, everything's a barrier. But actually, we're free to make our own choices. We're free to. We only get one chance at life and we're free to live it how you want to really within your reason obviously and your legalities and everything else um but i i get we wouldn't have done this when Olivia was young clearly um and the worst thing leaving olivia was when that was hardest when she went to uni it was like oh my god we drop her off at uni and like everyone's just bawling their eyes out my little baby's gone to uni <laughs> and she's going to stay there <laughs> um I, and then she comes back from uni and all of a sudden she wants to get a flat and I, I love it it's her, it's her life it's her independence she's doing her own things and you, you start to realize then your job as a mum and dad has slightly changed and you can actually begin to begin to get your own life back a little bit and you can dare to dream again and you know I, I've long since embraced life and wanting to enjoy it I'm not sitting there waiting for God uh, so some, some, I think you, I think when you stop and put your feet up, that's actually when you get old. I don't think you get old when you're living. Um, I think it's when you just stop and put your feet up and watch TV. Uh, so, mm, yeah. So, um, you know, it's it, it, wherever their destination is. I mean, uh, I don't know where some of your audience may want to move from and to, but I, I can guess it's from cold ventures into new warmer places because we all want warm stuff. Um, and, and clearly a four hour flight from the UK to Canary Islands probably isn't a lot for, for some of you guys. Um, uh, I mean, it's the same as Australia, really, isn't it? I mean, you can fly six, seven, eight hours across Australia and you're still in the same right. country. Uh, it's bizarre. <laughs> it's bizarre. I live in Texas, <laughs> ask me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, Texas is bigger than the UK, isn't it? It's actually bigger than the UK. It's just crazy, I know. It's like, <laughs> we drive eight, ten hours. And I'm like, right. I'm up through Texas. Congratulations. I, 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 do you know what? Joke, joking aside, though, it's, it's one of the places I still want to visit. Um, a few years back, oh, my daughter. It, no, seriously, I think there's two reasons. There's two places I want to visit, and I'm just I, I'll share this with you. I may so. We was in Chicago with my daughter and then went down to Evansville a few years back. She she was competing in a sport that she did. And um, we got a connecting flight back out home from Dallas. And I really wish we could get an overnight because there's an obvious reason why I'd want to visit Dallas like everyone else would, I guess. Uh, and it just resonated with me. And there's a reason why I want to go to Texas, but hopefully you haven't got any Mexicans on the, on the, <laughs> on the line. <laughs> so, so, um, but that's, it sounds crazy for an Englishman, but that's always resonated with me. Well, I've been really fascinated about the whole Alamo thing, genuinely, um, of the history of Texas between the original Spanish and then Texans and then, you know, Santa Ana and whatever else. It just sounds like a fantastic history. I know it's kind of been embraced, dare I say, by Hollywood, um, but... But yeah, it, it's a strange thing for me. It's one that there are two areas in, in the US I'd love to visit someday. I really would. Um, they've just got a personal interest from my perspective. And I know, obviously, because you've seen it online, that there is still the remnants, dare I say, of the. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> of the like, Alamo is a big tourist place, and you can find out mm. everything about it. Like, take over, take two, three days there because it's, it's yeah, a lot. Yeah, I mean, I, can't, and anyone that can kill John Wayne on TV, I mean, how can they do that? That's a shocker. That is. <laughs> That's <laughs> you, can't, you can't kill John Wayne. Right. You can do that. Even Bruce, even Bruce Dern did that, didn't he? Shot him right. in the back. He can't, he can't shoot John Wayne in the back. But anyway. Um, awesome. But, yeah, so I, I think, you know, and, and I, I I guess for people that are in the U.S., I wouldn't know, it's even the assumption I've got, is subject to where they live. You know, a four-hour journey is still the same as me going from the UK to, to here. Yeah. And you're going to get different climates, different cultures. Um, uh, clearly, you're going to get different landscapes. And so it, it, it might not be what you class as a true expat, as I am. Um, but I think people coming from sort of East Coast or West Coast or whatever in America, it's probably the same kind of change, drastic change. Um and it's it's not a decision you take lightly. Um, 
one would hope so. Um, but but yeah, for anyone that wants to do any of these things, yeah. just do it. I mean, Dubai is the latest thing as well, isn't it? Dubai, Thailand. Sorry? You only, you only live once. You do, allegedly, yeah. So um, uh, we'll find out one day, won't we, I guess. <laughs> but... but um, but yeah, yeah I, that's my that's my theory. Is you've got to, you, you've just got to in, you, honestly, you've just got to enjoy it. It's um, the best day in my life, genuinely, was was when my daughter was born, and my life just changed overnight for such wonderful reasons. And um, when you become her own person, uh, you couldn't be any more proud than than her becoming her own person and doing what she's done with her life, and, and you kind of. I say you realise then as an adult, as a parent, actually I've still got 20, 30, 40 years ahead of me. That, that you know, my I'll never stop being a dad. But Make she's not most dependent on me. Thing. Yeah, right. she's not dependent on me. She's got her own life, she's got her own decisions, she's her own person. If she wants to discuss things, she'll pick the phone up. If she wants a shoulder to cry on, she'll come and see me. Human nature being what it is. Um so there's no reason why you can't look at your own long-term dreams even if someone's planning today because their kids may be at college or whatever else and they're thinking this could be a two-year five-year plan because i think you've got to go into it with your eyes open i think you've got to plan it i say we was very maybe lucky that we traveled these on so many times and we knew one day we would do something we just weren't sure when or how and we had some false alarms along the way yeah, we had some false alarms over the years along the way where we thought we got very close to moving to Cyprus once, we got very close to moving to Ireland. Uh, that was with work when I was working for an Irish bank. And, um, yeah, when this, you know, everything just changed because of the whole COVID thing, really. And, you know, just a massive click in my head the way I viewed life in a totally different way. And at that, at that stage, it's sad that it took something like that to maybe become the catalyst. But at that stage, it it wasn't a difficult decision it was a very very easy decision the process to get from a to b wasn't quite as easy but the decision was very very but easy not impossible. and it was then a... no not impulsive no um it, it it wasn't a snap decision like some people you know may have and i guess we'd already got the house before the covid thing anyway so we we've got that and strange enough even through the, this is bonkers this is how mad the world was so we're in COVID, you can't go anywhere, but you can still go on a flight and come out here. How does that work? I don't know. Yeah, seriously. So, you know, all the hotels are closed. There's no restaurants open, but I could get on a plane for like £10, come out to here with a mask on with two people on a plane and spend a week out here and relax. <laughs> but that makes us well safe, obviously. Um, call me a cynic. <laughs> well, thank you. Any reason I've got injected. <laughs> Any reason I got injected so I could get on a plane. <laughs> right. God knows what he put inside me. <laughs> well, Darren, thank you so much for joining me today. It's been so fun to listen to your story and get all the vibes. You're welcome. I have already seen the pictures, but y'all better go to harlequinpodcast.com and look at the pictures that Darren sent me that I'm going to put in the blog post uh, for today because... It's amazing. You really want to go there. So you might have a lot of inquiries now. Can I come over and say hi? <laughs> I've got I've got three spare bedrooms here and ten beds. Okay, it's not a problem. <laughs> There's enough <laughs> bathrooms around. <laughs> emails now though. <laughs> but thank you so much for joining me on this very first show of Expat Life. It's been so much fun. And for y'all. I totally enjoyed it. Totally enjoyed it. Uh, many thanks for your hospitality and your time. Um, anyone's got any questions, you've got my details. You want to take any questions from anyone. Listen, I'll always respond and email back to you. It's not a problem at all. Absolutely. We, we, I will forward them. So if you just email to contact at harlequinpodcast.com, um, I will forward them to Darren so he can, can answer them straight to you as well. So thank you so much, Darren. Thank you all. And I will see you in two weeks.